Hi, well, welcome to beautiful Wisconsin. So we just had Halloween and we had record snowfall. Usually we got about a tenth of an inch in October and we got six inches on Halloween. Then we had a couple nice days and then yesterday we got five more inches of snow. Again, we're supposed to have less than an inch in November. Well, we've blown that away, but better days are coming. You know, so we're eagerly looking forward to next week when they say we're going to hit the all-time low temperatures on Monday and Tuesday. I usually say that um, wind chill is for wimps, and we only talk about real temperatures in Wisconsin. Uh, the real temperature is going to be around 7 to 10 degrees, and, and the weatherman says it'll be uh, somewhat below zero wind chill. So, oh joy, I can't wait. So, anyway, the purpose of this talk is to talk about our new book. And it's been 10 years in the making, and it's flatware that's not flat. And basically, it's a story about innovation, flatware um, over the period 1890 to 2015. Before we talk about the book, we'll talk about how we got here. So first of all, I and Ross Berlin were partners on Tiffany Silver in the early 1990s. And we met a collector named Bill Hood, who was a retired doctor, and he had done a few books on cooking. And he was just crazy interested in silver, especially Tiffany. And so he loved our business. Um, there really weren't any great Tiffany flatware books out. Carpenter had done a book that was some flatware, some hollowware. It was a small book. There wasn't that much research that went into it. So we worked with Bill and we managed to convince the Tiffany company to allow Bill to go into their archives, which were above the Fifth Avenue store in their attic. The water had gotten in there. The pigeons were flying around there. It was a mess. He spent a good amount of time finding the real story about Tiffany flatware. Then we combined what he knew with our knowledge and our inventory. So about 40% of the resulting book, Tiffany Sterling Flatware, that when Danny was in art, that was the result of his research, our flatware, our knowledge, silver of some of our advanced collectors resulted in this book. It um, was a, a big success. We sold quite a few copies. It went to a second printing and did well and sold out and now is out of print. But and we never knew how, what the result of the book was going to be, but we were seen as the experts and people brought Tiffany Silver for us to buy and then they came and sold us their Tiffany Silver too. So it was a really good experience. So that was 1999, the year. And then um, in 2008, the Warman Company came to me and said, we want a book about your sil silver experience, your life on the road, and a price guide for American Sterling Flower. And I agreed. I, I thought there was definitely a need for that book. And so in uh, 2009, I wrote this book, American Sterling Flower. Again, it was well received and it was a successful book. So then we went forward to 2010. We were doing the biggest show in the country, one of my favorite shows, the Baltimore show. And we were at this great Spanish restaurant called Teal Pepe's. And we were having dinner with Bill Hood. If you ever get to Baltimore, I really recommend Tio Pepe's. It's a really great restaurant. Anyway, we were talking about how our tastes had changed in a way. Uh, we still loved the old Tiffany Silver. We loved the Art Nouveau. We loved the Victorian. But we saw that in Sterling Flatware, there really hadn't been much innovation. You know, and the innovation that there was was in other things. There was stainless, there was wood, there, there was 
even plastic. And um, you know, that's where the interesting things were being done. And so we talked about another book. In creating this book, there was a lot of things to consider. So in our first book, in the Tiffany book, there were about 50 patterns that we had to look at. In the Sterling Flatware book, we discussed about 800 patterns out of a universe of 2,200. With the new book, which is very large, as I say, 800 plus pages, there's around 10,000 patterns to look at and then to choose the ones that actually were the most innovative. And so I put a few notes about the patterns that I thought were interesting. So during our first talk at that dinner, one of the patterns that I brought up was this gone fishing. Really cool. It's all different fish. And for the fishermen, like my sister's husband, you know, it's just something they, they like. It's a great conversation piece. So we talked about that and we said that belongs in the book. Then I have this pattern, Avante by Celsa. You know, uh, it's neat how the handle is all pierced. I love the shape of the knife. The serving pieces are really cool. There's a lot of collectors for it. And it's one of my favorite modern patterns. This one's really cool. This spaghetti fork. So it's a twirled shaft on this fork for twirling your spaghetti. And um, it's a really cool piece. This also brings me to talk about the photography. There's about 400 pictures in this book. And if you just showed the fork, it'd be okay. But showing it in a plate of spaghetti really gets your attention and I think really shows what a great idea it was. The craziest silver in the book was done by this Japanese artist. And this one, this pattern, for some reason is called Flower. I have no idea why. It sort of looks like a shark spin right there. Maybe that's a flower at the bottom, but really cool. And then this one is Moon. And I guess I see the half moons down here, but you could call it a lot of things. But it's just great the way it's done. And the last one is called Snow. Uh, this pattern was done in 1985. It's very rare, and I'm, I've got to hold it. I've uh, bought a few pieces, sold everything I've ever had in the pattern. And, you know, I guess that looks like snow, but uh, it could be a lot of stuff. This one is, I think, really cool too. It's like part of a bridge, and the guy was an engineer who made it. It looks really different, special, and that's what we tried to show. And then here is Hector Ang Angular, and um, his silver has that real strong look. I love the little bead there. I love the wire wrapping here. I think it's some of the best silk, modern silver there is. We took some of our favorite things and we put them on the back cover. Again, here's our, our favorite Japanese. Here's silver, every color of the rainbow, really nice. Here's these steak knives that just, um, you know, nest together. Here's our bridge work. Some of the most interesting silver was done in salad sets. I love the way these nest. Here's silver that all fits together. It's plastic. I love the pieces that are wood. Here's some silver that there it's totally different. The handles are suspended up in the air and the bottoms are on the table. This silver here is just crazy. Some of the coolest things again are salad sets. These are trees without their leaves. This is crazy flatware. And this is dandelions. Here's one with the full flower, and here's one after it shed its flower and just the, the seeds left. So this one is 2019, 1999, 2009, 2019. So once every 10 years we come up with a book, this one was the hardest. Bill should really be commended for all the wonderful work he did. I really appreciate all the work my daughter Angela did 
you know, we would come up with patterns that we thought were, were great. We'd find the pieces of the patterns that we thought were the best. The result was, I think, a, a really good, interesting book on innovative flatware. What's next? That's why we're here today. We're doing a YouTube to talk about the new book. So my sister is going to put some things on social media. I'm going to do a couple talks at antique shows, maybe a book signing or two. Uh, Bill's going to give talks in New York and Berlin. The um, collection is going to go through a fair number of museums in the United States where it will be on exhibition. So anyway, that's our plan for the book at the present. We'll see whether it's successful. But I think that this new modern silver that I really love will be more sought after. Uh, there'll be more collectors. There'll be more people interested in it because of the book. So already I'm being asked, what's the next book? Well, I don't know if there'll be a next book. This one took a lot of energy from everyone and there may not be. Some possibilities are this book goes to 1905 and we have plenty of material to go from 1905 to present. Bill has lost interest. He loves modern silver and so I don't think it's going to happen. This book has 800 patterns shown out of 2200. Since then I've got pictures of information on more than another 800 patterns and so it could easily be increased but interest in sterling flatware has waned and so will a publisher be looking to do that well, if i get approached maybe then there's the the makers shebler that rebel did really great silver and there should be a book about it several people have said they're working on books but I found through the last 20 or 30 years that for every person who talks about a book, you know, there's a very lean chance that a book will actually result. Then there's Whiting. Whiting is a, a great company. Uh, there should be a book written about Whiting. So, some people have tried and, um, you know, it's never resulted in anything. Another book about Gorham. There's at least two people working on books whether one will result, I'm not sure. I'm supposed to review one in the next month or so. Reading the first couple chapters, it seemed rather dry. So, so I don't know if I would spend the time to spice it up or just say not interested. And the other thing that could use a book but wouldn't be by me would be French silver. We're selling a lot of French silver these days. I think French silver flatware is really special and underappreciated. But I think the person should be a, a French person to write it because a lot of the information is in French. I'm just not the right person to write that book. Uh, but I sure would like to see one. So, so anyway, that is done. Uh, as far as the the hard part, I think, and the fun part for me is still coming. Thank you.